welcome to another exciting edition of Jamaica Magazine. I'm your host, Audrey Williams. It is Friday, end of the work week, but more importantly, the day before Jamaica celebrates its 60th year as an independent nation. If you've been paying attention, you know that we have made significant progress with plenty to be grateful for. And so there's reason to celebrate. We're leading the celebration by examining one of our national symbols, exploring what may be our greatest export, and planting seeds for a food secure Jamaica today, the next 60 years and beyond. Stay put, soon come back. No matter where in this world I go, I am a Jamaican. Jamaica comes alive as we celebrate 60 years of independence, our diamond jubilee, all year long. Join in the celebratory events, showcasing impactful legacy projects, entertainment and exciting commemorative events. Resilient and brave, industrious, Yes, we are Jamaicans. Jamaica 60, reigniting a nation for greatness. Them here Jamaican chat, them see Jamaican map. Good day, I'm Theodore Henry, and this is your GIS News for Friday, August 5, 2022. The call is now out for contractors to begin construction of the redeveloped Spanish Town Hospital early in 2023. The Ministry of Health and Wellness launched the international tender process for the multi-million dollar project yesterday. And all systems are lined up to go, so there is no turning back. The resources are in place. The technical work has been completed and all we want now through a process that is transparent and accountable, a procurement process in conformity with international standards, is to find the right contractor. The health minister says the contract is open to competent contractors anywhere in the world. It is one of several hospitals being targeted under the Health System Strengthening Program, to which the Inter-American Development Bank is contributing 50 million US dollars and the European Union 11.2 million euros, in addition to significant capital outlay from the government of Jamaica. And the extent to which this facility will add valued services to the Spanish Town Hospital and to the people of St. Catherine and its environs. Uh, is the extent to which this development represents the single largest infrastructure development in public health in our nation's history. A brand new six-story building will be constructed and connected to the existing structure by a skywalk. It will include upgrades to established areas such as accident and emergency, radiology, outpatient service, pharmacy, endoscopy, the surgical suite, medical records, high dependency unit, a central sterile service department, underground staff parking lot, and other features. It will also allow the Spanish Town Hospital to offer new specialized services such as neurology, cardiology, urology, oncology, and psychiatry. Prime Minister Andrew Holness says the opening of the Kingston Logistics Park, KLP, is a significant investment that will bring more economic growth and job creation for the country. He was speaking at the official opening of the facility on Wednesday. And it demonstrates us as a people leveraging our God-given ideal location and using our natural assets to create prosperity for our people. This development means more foreign exchange earnings and higher quality jobs. The Kingston Logistics Park incorporates 18,000 square meters of warehouse space. It falls under the wider Logistics Hub Initiative, LHI, and is designed to position the country as a global destination in cargo transshipment and logistics services. 
The park includes a border protection center, which houses the Jamaica Customs Agency, JCA, as well as the Container Security Initiative, which is a collaboration between the JCA and the United States government. The Prime Minister says the park represents the first phase of nine acres of near-port logistics facilities and is built to the standards and codes of world-class logistics hub operations. Government is working with stakeholders to develop a shared database to target human traffickers. To facilitate the process, a memorandum of understanding has been signed among the membership of the National Task Force Against Trafficking in Persons, NATFATIP. Minister of State in the Ministry of National Security, Xavier Main, says it will provide centralized access to data to ensure a more comprehensive, sustained and effective system for combating trafficking in persons. The State Minister gave the update during a Trafficking Conversations event held recently at the Office of the National Rapporteur on Trafficking in Persons. The NATFATIP is comprised of approximately 24 entities, ministries, departments and agencies of government, in addition to non-governmental organizations, all of which generate and receive data from various sources. Mr. Main says this arrangement is suboptimal as it leads to data duplication, outdated information, inaccuracies and low-quality data input and output. With the signing of the MOU, he says it now falls on the relevant agencies to ensure they are all on the same page regarding standards and best practices and sharing important intelligence and resources. The spate of crashes on the nation's roads is fast escalating into a national crisis, says Minister of Local Government and Rural Development Desmond McKenzie. The minister was addressing a recent disaster preparedness town hall meeting in Sedan. He says the government is very perturbed by the level of recklessness involved in many of the crashes, the wanton loss of lives, and the effects these have on grieving families. We have a disaster that is of real concern. A man-made disaster which is out of indiscipline, ignorance, and disregard for the rules of the country. And we are paying a severe price for this level of indiscipline that has taken over our roads. We are losing lives. The minister says the time is now ripe for a fully-fledged public education campaign on road usage. He is urging members of the public to utilize the power of social media to both highlight and promote ways of preventing the carnage taking place on roads across the island. In the same way in which we use social media and other forms of information to be critical and raise concerns about issues let us start a campaign in this country about the carnage on our roads and what we as jamaicans can do and is prepared to do minister mckenzie is also calling on public transport operators to be more responsible in executing their duties he also insists that commuters must take a stand against traveling in vehicles that have shown a blatant disregard for road safety. And finally, the Ministry of Labor and Social Security is advising members of the public that Monday, August 8th, is a normal working day. In response to queries from members of the public, the ministry points out that Section 2 of the Holidays Public General Act and the schedule to this act provide that Independence Day shall be celebrated on the 6th day of August, and where that date is on a Sunday, Independence Day is to be observed on the following Monday. However, as August 6 falls on a Saturday this year, the following Monday, August 8, will be a normal workday. And that's it for GIS News Today. I'm Theodore Henry. Thanks for watching. matter where in the world you are. If you are a Jamaican, you know that the motto out of many one people is founded on our multicultural heritage. This is depicted on one of the symbols of our nationhood, the coat of arms. Do you understand what the symbol signifies? Let's learn together. Moving away from the British monarchy and into self-governance, Jamaica needed to establish its own identity. 
and in doing so, national emblems and symbols were created that represent our history, values, goals, and who we are as a people. Among them was the Arms of Jamaica, sometimes referred to as the Coat of Arms. There are eight elements to this majestic symbol, the crest, supporter, shield, helmet, horse, mantling, motto, and the design. Each represent an important part of our journey as a country. Take for example the shield. The red cross on the white background represents the flag of England, a nod to the fact we were once under British rule. And while the pineapples, which were imported to the island, bear no relation to our indigenous fruits, five golden pineapples were added to give a royal or stately look. The shield is the premier component of any arms and usually appears in the center of the assemblage. Another portrayal of Jamaica's British colonial period is a helmet and mantle. They represent the royal helmet of the British monarchy and bear similar design to the royal coat of arms. Their relevance today may lie in the fact that Jamaica still pledges allegiance to the Queen of England. The tenacity and strength of the people is depicted in the crocodile, a fearless spirit not deterred by obstacles, a fight to the end for progress. Referred to as the crest, the crocodile takes its place on top of the arms of Jamaica, resting on what's called the torse. The symbol of the crocodile is used by the Jamaica Defense Force as its premier cap badge, and the Bank of Jamaica also uses a crocodile as the keeper of the keys to its vault and guardian to the country's finances. One of the indigenous features of the arms takes the form of two of its outer components, tainas. The female taina takes her place on the right while her male counterpart appears on the left. Together they are the supporter and believed to be the first settlers of Jamaica, migrating from South America somewhere around 700 to 1000 AD. Taina were short and muscular and wore little clothes. Today, some of their practices and cultures are still in use in Jamaica. And as other nations began to settle on the island, we became a country of mixed race, which led us to accept our revised motto, out of many, one people. The Arms of Jamaica is one of the oldest national arms in the world. In fact, we were the first British colony to receive our own. It was granted under the Royal Warrant on February 3, 1661. The arms was originally designed by William Sandcroft, who then became the Archbishop of Canterbury in 1677. There has been three documented changes to the arms of Jamaica in 1692, 1957, and 1962. Today, the arms of Jamaica appears on every denomination of local currency, on the passport of all citizens, and all other national documents. It is a stamp, an authentication of who we are as a people, and the final seal of governmental approval. The travel file application was created by the Transport Authority for the protection of the commuting public. Please download the travel file application on the Google Play Store or the Apple iOS Store. Once you download the application, put in your phone number, register the application under your phone number, and then you'll be able to verify the license plate that you're going in. Once you verify the license plate and the information of the vehicle, you will then be able to share that trip of the vehicle that you're in. And if there is um, difficulty on the trip, you would then will be able to push a panic button and share your location with others as well. Download the application, give us our feedback at customerservice at ta.org.jm. Don't forget, it's free to download, free to use. Say it with me. Reggae is our culture. If you agree, it's important to understand how this genre has influenced Jamaican culture. Our next feature will shed light on a few things you might not be aware of. The music industry has been quite well documented and 
to my recollection, it started um, more of an effort to play music that other people couldn't play than as an industry. So it, from where it started, for me, it started with sound system owners who wanting to remain exclusive, decided that the best way to do that was to, you know, produce their own stuff. And it, people saw how important it was. Um, artists were, you know, coming up. Uh, it, I think it was the birth of an of a industry. Reggae is the soundtrack of our lives, you know. In other words, it's not like we, we made an effort to we're gonna like reggae. Reggae is of us, about us, with us, and it it has remained true to, to us as a Jamaican expression. And when I say reggae, I don't make the distinction between fast reggae, slow reggae, ska. I just call Jamaican music reggae. It was very unstructured in the beginning and persisted like that for, for a number of years until um, people like Chris Blackwell saw the, the, the financial possibilities involved in investing. Um, so I guess it really came to front with the, with the, with the Milly Small, that big hit that he had. And people started to say money. So this could, be, could in fact be an industry. And that's and how popular music like Ska was, that it, it gave rise to, you know, songs and bands and people, Jamaica was dancing and people were enjoying themselves. And it, it probably was a good time in the history of Jamaica. It kind of unearthed just a spirit, a creative spirit in Jamaica. And we broke all of the recording rules but we came up with a product that kind of represented the kind of Jamaican spirit, and that, that, that indomitable spirit. And it gave, it gave a sort of voice or expression to our Africanness. Like everybody might growing up in my age, we had two sets of things. I grew up in the golden age of both Jamaican music and the Motown era and the Philadelphia era. And radio played a lot of American music. We were naturally drawn to the, the best of American music. But we, you realize that when you got to a party and they started to play the local section of music, because it was talking about things that, that you were familiar with. You, 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 you went, you know, and then you were able to see these individuals at stage shows and parties. So it became even more personal. Standing at the party, watch me now. Ice cream, watch out. Me a chat microphone from me like a Music is just being constantly made. Um, I don't think we have taken time out to actually figure out how we're gonna monetize the creation of all this music. But it is there. It is being consumed in every nook and cranny of Jamaica, every bar, everything, and in households. And then we have this phenomenon of this weekly dance, I mean this nightly dance, I mean music thing on corners and it, it has opened up a lot of economic opportunities for people in corners, bars, you know, people selling on the road and so it, it is almost self-sustaining by the nature of how it is done. So it, it is always going to be part of the, our lifestyle. From the 70s, 80s, 90s, um, Jamaica celebrated a number of great icons. You know, we talk about the Ernest Smiths, the Pluto Sherwin Tans, the Dennis Browns, you know, the Gregory Isaacs, um, the Alton Ellis, um, and, and then we get into the megastar region of the Jimmy Cliffs and the Peter Touch and then the Bob Marley's. I can't refuse it Oh, what you be got to be well, I feel like that Growing up, Dennis Brown was everybody's favorite singer. So when I got an opportunity to work with him, it was like the crowning, you know, day in my life, in my musical history. My head is anointed, and my cup running to my Surely goodness and mercy should follow all the days of my life. I was 
led into professional music through some people that I read in the music. And the first time I got into a recording studio and became a part of that creative process, I was hooked for life, you know. I realized early I didn't have the singing talent like a lot of my friends and compare, but I realized that my contribution could be through songwriting and later into production. And later on into just mentoring young people. Because we have a student at Grafton um, and we have a really close association with the Jamaica School of Music, I'm at a, I get a front seat, you know, front row look at a lot of the young talent coming out. And then in the, we have a rehearsal room where we are now. I have a studio, so I get to see and hear a lot of the young talent and, and older talent. And here at Grafton, is a, we provide a sort of meeting place. I'm really always excited about introducing you know, new artists to, to old artists. If you're anything like me, you'll prefer a dinner that you've prepared yourself. And growing your own vegetables is the best way to ensure you always have fresh, healthy food. Our upcoming feature will show you how to make meals with produce from your own backyard garden. The Ministry of Agriculture and the Fisheries recently outlined the Grow Smart, Eat Smart campaign, an initiative designed to strengthen food security and to safeguard Jamaica from global threats. One aspect of the campaign is the drive for Jamaicans to grow what they eat. One of our local chefs will prepare a dish from produce from her garden. So we're gonna start with passion fruit because it's passion fruit season. This is how our pulp is, and I'm just going to add it to our blender with my ginger that I already pre-washed and cut. Add that first. I tend to use a finer strainer, and the more passion you, you put in there, the more um, color you'll get, and the benefit again of eating and drinking what you grow is your health. And at this point now, I'm going to add my sugar. I mix till you dissolve your sugar. So here you have it, homemade passion fruit juice. Growing smart does not require a big farm. A small patch of land in your backyard, couple pots, and you can be on your way to harvesting produce for the dining table. Whatever and however much you manage to grow, put it to good use, cooking up healthy traditional or new dishes for the family to eat. It's what Kara has been doing. My thing is make your hand, turn your hand, make fashion. So how it came about is my Aki mashup, boil it out. So I needed to use it. And I came up with Alfredo. And it is vegan, it's healthy. Every ingredient that I have in here, it's local. So I'm gonna start off with our, you can use any onion. I just think the red onion looks nice. So I'm going to just julienne this, because I want it to stand out. Cut out the stem, so then you get them loose. And then here, I already pre-cut some tricolor bell peppers, or what we call sweet pepper, red, yellow, and green. We have some string bean and some julian um, carrots right here. We have some local cherry tomatoes, which, you know, grows well in some garden. Garlic, which, you know, is a must in our seasoning. And from here, I have some dry seasoning. So I have Italian herb, I have some dried basil and my salt and pepper mix. And I'm also going to cut up a little scotch bonnet because, you know, Jamaica we say. This recipe takes about 30 minutes as long as you have everything prepped. 
the longest part is probably sauteing the vegetables. From here we move to our stove, so on medium heat. Well, I have my pasta about to go into the boiling water. You can use any pasta you want. I'm just using what I have in the house today, which is some tagliatelle. From here, I'm going to turn on my skillet. You can use coconut oil, if you feel, or olive oil, um, or whatever oil you have on, at home. And our oil is now hot. Cook your onions first, because you don't want raw onions. The next would be your carrots and your green beans, because they're raw, I didn't blanch them. So as you can see, the pasta is boiling. And then I'm gonna add my garlic. Now this is an Alfredo, so I put a lot of garlic. At this point, I'm going to actually add my aromatics, which is, I have some fresh thyme here. And you're developing your flavors, you're building. I'm going to also add my dry herbs, which is my Italian, and basil. At this point, if you have extra ackee, I'll put a little bit in there. And you can use any vegetable you want. And then I'm also going to add my peppers at this point. And then I'm going to check my pasta, which is about al dente right now. And at this point, you can add your coconut milk from your coconut tree if you have any coconuts that are dry. I also have my scotchy. You can put as much or as less as you want. And from here, you can serve it in a bowl, you know. A deeper dish is probably better for pasta. Give it some height by twisting it. Sauce it up as much as you want. So I'm going to garnish it with my basil, my fresh basil. This is called chiffonade, where you ribbon it. You can also garnish with parsley, which I have growing at home as well. And clean up your plate, don't be like me. <laughs> and there you have it, Aki Pasta Alfredo. And there are other dishes like this one that you can use ackee to create, such as curry ackee pasta, the traditional sawfish with ackee, and here is something you may not hear of often, ackee pockets with cocoa bread. The message to our consumers who depend on us to provide wholesome and nutritious food to their household is not just to eat, but to eat smart. As we're at the Jubilee, um, the 60th um, here is a milestone. And um, Jekro is, is what, four years old, but we play a great um, part um, in the 60th um, independence in that we have one of the, the best um, coffee in the world, known as the Jamaica Blue Mountain. We have the fine flavor cocoa in the world as well. So if we put all those two things together, we have something big to sell and to offer our wider population. So we say in the 60th anniversary, it's JCRO and the Ministry of Agriculture and Fisheries to the world. We've come to the end of our program. Get a recap of all you saw here and more on our website www.jis.gov.jm From all of us here at the JIS, I'm Audrey Williams. Bye for now. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica. Jamaica.